Hi Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNP route and T-shoot video pop quiz here for you. And we're going to get to that question and the live equipment in about 20 seconds. I also invited my CCNA Bulldogs to watch this one. Uh, it's a good practice exam question for you, but it's a good example of what I call a 3-in-1 or 4-in-1 question, where there may just be one answer, but at the same time, there are three or four different things you got to know to come up with that answer. Let's see what the heck I'm talking about on this board. You're going to configure a static route that should be used only if the dynamically learned route for that same destination is lost. And I put a route and next top IP address on the board as well to give us something to work with. Now, the protocols involved in the route discovery in this question, there are two of them, OSPF and external EIGRP. What is the minimum acceptable admin distance for this static route? And what is the full command? I'm going to bring the live equipment up and demo the full command in just a moment. But what we're talking about here is a floating static route. And the first time I heard the term, it's like, well, you know, floating on what? Well, it's kind of floating out there in limbo, if you will, on the router, unless the better routes for that same destination disappear from the network. Now, if you want to see a longer lab on floating static routes, just do a quick search on that on YouTube or, frankly, in Google, and my longer videos for that will come up. But we're going to keep this one a little shorter. Now, we've got to know, first off, the command to write a floating static route, and we're still going to use the IP route command for that. We also need to know what the admin distances are for OSPF and external EIGRP. And watch the details here, because external EIGRP is a lot different than regular old EIGRP, the internal routes. So our, if our ADs are 110 for OSPF and 170 for external EIGRP, the minimum acceptable distance is going to be what? Does it need to be lower or higher than those two numbers? Not, excuse me, 110 and 170. Let's go ahead and bring up the live equipment, and I'll show you exactly how we do that. We start with the IP route command, and the, the syntax is really the same that we've used before. And we're going to use the slash 24 network there. And we've got the option here at this point, of course, next top IP address or local router exit interface. And I believe it was 172.12.123.2. It was. So, so far, it's just a normal static route. Here's where it becomes a floating one. And that is by setting the distance metric for this route. Now, don't let this term throw you, because as soon as we hear metric, we tend to think the route cost. But we're not setting a cost here. We're setting the admin distance for this route. And what we need for a floating static route, a route that will only enter the table if we lose these dynamic routes, is a route with an AD at least one higher than that of the highest AD involved. So if we have 110 right here and 170 right here, if we want to get cute about it, and we are being asked here what is the minimum acceptable admin distance, that would be 171. And that would actually be your full command right there. It's simply IP route followed by the destination network, followed by the mask for that destination, next top IP address or local exit interface, and then finally the AD for that. It's a good command to have down cold for your CCNP route and T-shooting exams. Thanks for taking today's pop quiz. Make sure to come out and see us on our social media sites as well. And I'm Chris Bryant, CCI12933. Thanks for making TBA part of your Cisco certification success story. See, I knew it was there. <laughs> Put that on the blooper reel. That's bigger than the regular one. Seriously, thanks for watching.